the Bernina 880 Sewing Information Menu with Susan Fears. Well, we're going to take a look at some of the great creative features that are all stored in the I, which is, stands for the Information Menu. So this great sewing I has all of our creative functions that we can apply to any of the stitches. So you may, as you are looking at our screen, you see that, well, there's not a lot of options here. But all of those features are hidden behind the I. But every time you select a different stitch or stitch type or stitch menu, the icons may change. So if you're sewing and you're in the information screen and you're sewing practical stitches or you're sewing decorative stitches, you may see a menu that looks similar to this where you have mirror image controls, pattern repeat controls, long stitch. And we'll take a look at this a little bit more up close in just a few minutes. But if you're in the buttonhole screen and you go to the information screen because you want to be able to change dimensions or the change size of the buttonhole, your menu looks like this. If you're creating an alphabet, your information screen also changes, looks like this. And if you're trying to create a taper, your information screen looks different. So we're going to take a look at what these different screens are, what the icons are, and why you would go into the information screen. We also want to take a look at some of the permanent icons. So things that rest below the bar, what they are, why they're there, when you would use them, and you know why are they important. And then we also want to take a look at, well, how come I can't see all of the icon? It looks like there's some. How do I scroll to see the rest of those icons? So let's take a look at the 880 simulator. This is just like what you are sewing with at home. This is your screen. And if I'm in sewing and I have a straight stitch on this screen and I select the information screen, this is where I'm going to see things like, uh, pattern repeat, mirror image, side to side, top to bottom. This is pattern elongation, sewing in 360 degrees, long stitch and distortion. But what about right here? There's something that I don't see, and these, these four below this line. Any time that you see a screen where you only see partial icons with some shading, this means you can scroll, and this operates a lot like a smartphone. You just want to touch on it, and then you want to move it, and then you can see the remaining icons, which in this case are balance and the fine tune for the dual feed. The icons that are at the bottom of this screen, these four are permanent reverse, back stepping, save settings, and reset settings. So for every stitch on the Bernina 880, you can change the stitch to be the stitch that you prefer. So in this case, let's say with my straight stitch, I would really prefer to sew with um, not, not changing the width, but changing the length to maybe just fine tune it to 2.55. That's what I really want my straight stitch to be programmed for for this project this series of projects or forever. So when I go into my information screen, I can select the save. And now that is the saved stitch setting for my straight stitch. Anytime the machine is turned on, that's the stitch setting that I will have. Now let's say six months from now, I am sewing a different set of projects, different fabrics, and I have reason to reset it back to the default or I just don't like this and I'm ready for default. I can deactivate that by selecting the reset icon and the reset icon restores it back to the normal factory settings and now I have everything set back to where it was for this stitch. So for every stitch on the machine you can set it to be your personal settings and then you can always reset it back. So never worry about making these types of adjustments. While we're on the straight stitch, there is a, a stitch that actually probably makes more sense while, to look at while we're here. And this is called long stitch. And what long stitch does is it takes a stitch every other stitch for the stitch that's in the sequence. So it just lengthened this out. Where this might become important would be if I am doing a basting stitch, I have a stitch length of six. But if I wanted to 
have a longer stitch length than six, I could activate long stitch, and now my stitch length is very long. So that, that's a great thing to use for uh, very temporary stitches that you want to remove very quickly and very easily. To clear this away, I can select the icon, or I can also touch the clear function, and that will clear everything, the function as well as my st stitch setting that I had selected. If I take a look at a decorative stitch, and I'm going to select something from this menu, uh, stitch number 406, that's one of the compact satin stitches. Some of the icons that make sense are, maybe I only want three of these. So if I tap the pattern repeat function three times, it says I'm going to get three. That is displayed here. If this screen were closed, I would still see that displayed right here on my screen or to the left of the pattern. The machine will stitch three, three of these patterns and stop. The end. Maybe you want four or five or all the way up to nine. Once you get to nine, you're at the end, so here is where you're going to touch it again to clear. Or, let's say you have four, you also can press and hold to clear. And once it's cleared, you can release. And you would be just tapping on or holding on the screen to clear. Also, something that's fun to do with decorative stitches and allows you to work for, on your project in different orientations is mirror image left and right. So it just flips the stitch left and right. Uh, for this stitch, uh, top bottom doesn't really matter so much, but there are sequences that you would create where it would matter. Stitch elongation is a really wonderful uh, feature. I can stretch the stitch out, and while I'm stretching the stitch out, you'll see that there is some spacing introduced in between these the stitches. But I also can adapt the, um, this by increasing the density or taking this away. So you can make these adjustments to maintain or create the stitch values that you need. This would be a fun thing to do if you are stitching with a thread that is really, really thick. So maybe you need to loosen up the density or really, really thin and you need to increase the density. But your stitch elongation, how far you stretch it out, can be controlled very easily by the slider bar or by using the little plus or minus uh, keys right here. The all allotment that you have for changing an elongation on a stitch will vary, and it will vary depending on what looks good. So you may not have uh, up to a thousand to change a stitch to, but uh, you may only have up to a hundred. That is uh, already been set for you. Now if I want to stay in the I menu with this stitch 406, if I look at the breadcrumbs that exist on the I menu screen, I see that I'm in elongation, I'm in the I, and I'm at stitch 406. So I always know what stitch I'm affecting and where I am. So I can select the I breadcrumb, and that will allow this window or the I screen to stay open, because maybe now I need to turn on mirror image. So I haven't had to exit out of the eye screen. I just select the eye breadcrumb to stay in, in that selection. I'm going to clear that because another icon that's fun to look at is stitching in 360 degrees. So you can move how the stitch is going to stitch by selecting one of these little pegs on the screen that give a degree rotation, or you can also change it in incremental bits for fine tune. And this is a wonderful way to stitch some very unique patterns. The starting point of the design is the dot. The ending point is the red spot. So you see this, and you know exactly how it's going to stitch in relation to the foot. And it had, knows that now we're sewing sideways. So it is recommending a 40C foot, which is the sideways motion foot. So that is sewing in 360 degrees. And you can do that with almost all of the stitches. So those are some very basic things for the information screen for straight stitch and for the decorative stitches. If I am selecting an alphabet and I'm typing in 
a letter and I go into my information screen, I'm going to see a couple of things that I didn't see before. Um, the, in, the alphabet was not highlighted, so it wasn't available to me because I didn't have a letter on the screen. But I may only want one of these letters, so a pattern repeat would be important. Maybe I want this at the 6 millimeter size or this 9 millimeter size. So you have a, a large and a medium size. And of course, being able to work with uh, mirror image and elongation and the multi-directional, the 360, would also be really, really handy. There is one icon I did not mention when we were in our decorative stitches, and this is distortion. And we will talk again about distortion um, in a future tutorial, but we'll also talk about, just, I'll go back to distortion to show you a little bit about this as well. If I'm selecting buttonholes, and I select a buttonhole, when I select the information menu, I have a different set of of functions to apply to this. Probably some of the things that are most important to you are how long is this buttonhole going to be? So I can activate my on-screen button measuring by touching the on-screen button measuring icon, hold the button up to the screen, turn the knobs until the yellow circle is the same size as my button, and then I am ready to stitch my buttonhole. But perhaps I want to make a few other changes to the buttonhole, such as the buttonhole slit width. So on some fabrics, especially very thick fabrics, you may want a wider opening between the beads of the buttonhole. And you can adjust that with the button slit width adjustment by using the knobs and increasing that opening. Now while you work on this and increase the opening, you may decide you also want to widen the beads a little bit. Now you have a bigger opening and a little bit wider uh, stitch beads on your buttonhole. And that was simply changed by touching the stitch width knob while I did not have one of the other functions open. So that is a great way to be able to work with the buttonholes, programming your length and setting up your stitch, um, your stitch uh, slit width alteration. When we were looking at decorative stitches, I, I, I neglected to review one of the icons. This is distortion, and distortion is a great way to talk about changing the baseline effectively. So if I change the stitch width knob, you'll see how the little oval is beginning to stitch off to the right. If I start turning it, to the left, it begins to move to the left. If you make these changes while you are stitching, you're going to get a very nice waved or curved baseline with your stitch. This works particularly well with compact satin stitches, such as you find in the 400 menu. Uh, stitch, uh, stitch number 427 works really, really neat. But as soon as you start turning your distortion icon, you'll see you only get the one. And imagine it stitching off and making a curve. And we'll look at this in a future tutorial. Another information screen that gives you a few other options that you may not see, because as I open this, you see there's some that are darkened that we've not seen highlighted yet, because they're not really available for this. So if I go back into selecting my decorative stitches, and we're going to take a look at the tapering menu. If I select a tapering stitch and select the information menu, one of these icons that I didn't see before was the tapering function. This allows me to set what type of tapered end I would like to have for my taper. So as, as you see these, you see that this is the taper is at the center. So it ends in the center, starts at the center, and ends at the center. And these are the types of shapes that you could make with it for fun. What if you want your shape to end on the, the left side? Then you could make a great tapered corner box or a different shape. Uh, again, a different size taper, having the needle end at a different spot, and then this is yet still another one. And then manual would be, allows you to set the taper of your choice, because not all applique shapes that you are going to be working with are going to be a defined shape. So you have 
uh, this manual option that allows you to create the taper that you need for your starting and end points. As you are working with tapering, you would begin to stitch. And then when you're in this middle section, when you're ready to um, end the taper, you would press the quick reverse button. And that's kind of a reminder, you have it right here on your screen, that that would be the next step. But this allows you to sew and sew and sew and sew. And then when you're ready, you touch the quick reverse, and it stitches this third and last part of your taper. It also remembers the size of the taper because you've used the quick reverse button. And if you wanted to sew another one the exact same size, you could just by starting over, starting again. And the second time that you sew the taper, you would not need to select the quick reverse because you've already programmed that length into place. So a couple of things that we've gone over were the different menus that you see during the, when you open the eye in different menu screens, different stitch screens from the 880. We've also talked about scrolling and seeing the additional icons. And we've talked a little bit about these permanent icons that allow you to save your stitch settings for exactly the way you want to sew for each stitch on the machine. And this wraps up what I have to tell you about the information screens on the Bernina 880.